So here's where we stand in Washington. The president is courting Republicans in hopes of reaching a big deal to cut the deficit, but if nothing is done at all, we'll have a government shutdown at the end of the month. It's a tough time to pitch something like early childhood education spending, but that's just what Pennsylvania Senator Bob Casey did this week. We met him at the Capitol and began by asking what he thought of the piece of legislation passed by the House of Representatives this week, which would avert the shutdown by funding the government through September, but only at the new, lower sequestration levels. I think it's a bad idea to, to, to embrace uh, the sequester, and I'm not going to back off my my perspective on this, that uh, the sequester is bad policy. The best thing we can do is uh, reverse it, unravel it, um, or, or, or deal with it better than we have so far. The president, uh, by many accounts, has been making this charm offensive, uh, courting Republicans <laughs> yeah. for perhaps a big um, deficit deal. Does he need to charm Democrats as well, or are Democrats ready to come along with whatever deal the president strikes? No, I think it's, and I wouldn't use the word charm when it comes to either, maybe either party, I'd say more, uh, more engagement. I think, and, and I think that too often around here people say, he needs to do more. That guy over there, or she needs to do more. I think people who say that on a rate, we all do it to a certain extent, need to look in the mirror <laughs> and ask the person in the mirror, are you doing enough to engage your colleagues? Um, so it, as important as it is for the president to, to engage or re-engage with folks, uh, we've all got to do more because uh, this is not going to be a problem solved by the president. He's going to be a huge part of this, obviously. It's not going to be solved by one party. It's got to be solved by both branches of government and both parties. And it will require both parties doing things they don't want to do. That's right. So, and so I want to just test you a little bit on the things that you don't want to do that you might be willing to do uh, in the interest of a compromise. Medicare age, is that something that should be in this discussion, can be in this discussion? I don't think it should be. Is it um, a non-starter? Yeah, I think it's a non-starter for a lot of people. Is but it a non-starter for you? You won't vote for a compromise that includes... That's not something that I think we should do. It doesn't... I, I, don't, I don't think, A, it, it... First of all, the savings you can derive from that are vastly overblown. But even if you can make a savings argument, I don't think it makes sense. We have... Um, we've got a system in place now where people are, have earned benefits. Too often in Washington, people talk about programs and entitlements. These are earned benefits. And I think when it gets to the question of, of the age, um, it, it doesn't make sense at all. But we can still get a lot of savings um, from, from health care in our, in our federal government. There are lots of ways to, to uh, bring about efficiencies. And by the way, a lot of those savings will be derived over time by good and strong implementation of, of uh, the Affordable Care Act. Let me just ask you one more. Means testing entitlements, That's, that the rich might not get the same benefits that the no, I, class are I want to see how, how people articulate that. Um, I, I know people talk about it and what, what it means, but look, I, I think we're, we're, we're going to have a lot of changes made. As but that, that one's on the table, I'm hearing. Well, no, I don't think it's on the table yet. I'll, I'll tell you what's on the table, uh, which can be both very important to have a fair tax system, but as, but as a way to derive revenue, is tax reform, where you can say that loopholes that have over a long period of time have benefited very wealthy individuals or interests, we need to, to reform them and both make the reforms but also derive from rev revenue from that. So you started this uh, Prepare All Kids Act and we know a bit about it. Early childhood education is something that has relative bipartisan support. You want to have the federal go government match some state funds. But I was hoping you'd explain why you think the program's important, what you hope it'll do, and also, because I'm not sure I've heard this yet, what it's going to cost. Well, first and foremost, the, the, the focus here is on something very basic. The kids that learn more now will earn more later. All the studies show that we, it's, it's irrefutable, especially when you track children over, over decades. There's the, the dollar amounts here, we don't know yet, because we have to first and foremost get a bipartisan agreement to put the program like this in place. Is there and something then, you you're asking for, though? Is no, there a number you're asking for? We didn't put a dollar amount in it, in, for, in recognition of the times we live in. If this were a different time, I could put a, a dollar amount in, and that would, that would make sense. And it's something with support across the ideological spectrum, so I wonder who you need to convince. There, well, there, there is, but there's not support in terms of, not enough support in a bipartisan way on a path to move forward. But early learning, I think, has been 
kind of on the, on the back burner. We need to move it forward. Senator, thanks a lot. Thank you.